A while back, I made a video where I shared with you that I disabled GitHub Copilot and I explained the reasons why. I also told you that if I went back to using AI coding tools again, I would let you know. The day has come, but it isn't GitHub Copilot. It's actually better, I think. The main reason why I disabled GitHub Copilot is because I could feel my brain rotting, becoming lazy and dependent on it. I realized that using GitHub Copilot can make me feel more productive, but it definitely doesn't make me a better developer. I want to be good at solving problems, and if I stop practicing that skill, I'll become bad at it. It's simple. If you stop practicing problem solving and all you do is accept Copilot suggestions, why would a company promote you? How will you become a senior? And why would a company keep you when Copilot gets better? In the previous video, some comments said that if I didn't use GitHub Copilot, then I shouldn't be using Excel sheets or calculators or even VS Code and that I should be coding in a notepad with no help, which is missing the point. I know you can't stop progress and I'm not saying to not use any tech that makes your life easier. What I'm saying is that I'm not sure that AI generated code is a net positive for developers. There was a study by App Level that found that developers did not have any significant productivity gains from using GitHub Copilot. GitHub Copilot also didn't actually prevent developer burnout. And most importantly, the study found that the developers that use GitHub Copilot introduce 41% more bugs into their code than those who don't. Having said all that, I am coding with AI again, but not using GitHub Copilot and only for specific cases. I have been using Cursor for the last three weeks, and I think that it is a pretty good coding assistant that is perfect at doing the boring stuff for me, like refactoring, importing, renaming, and even creating files and folders. It is helpful when I need to learn how to use a new package or learn about a new version of a package that both me and the AI have never seen before and very rarely hallucinate. And with the right configuration, it also gets out of the way. So I can be the one problem solving while still getting a real productivity boost. Cursor is so good that Microsoft literally copied most of its features for the new version of GitHub Copilot. They are threatened by it. They did not copy all of them though. There are some killer features that for now are exclusive only to Cursor. So make sure you watch until the end of this video. So let me show you why I like Cursor and how I use it. Cursor isn't a VS Code plugin like Copilot. It is a different code editor. It is a fork of VS Code, which means it looks and works just like VS Code with some extra AI sprinkled on top. You can import all your extensions, themes, and settings from VS Code into Cursor with one click and it will work all the same. Just like GitHub Copilot autocompletes code, so does Cursor. That feature is called Cursor Tab. I find it much better than Copilot because it not only autocompletes code, but suggests refactors around your existing code. It can modify multiple lines at once, and it sometimes suggests fixes based on linter errors, which is awesome. Here you can see how I changed this variable from red color to red coloring, and Cursor Tab suggests a fix for the error, as well as an edit for the other variable, green color color to green coloring because it predicts that is what I may do next. Here you can see how after changing from snake case to camel case a couple of times, Cursor Tab realized what I'm doing and suggests the change for the rest of the code. It suggests changes as a div and to accept them I just press Tab. And here you can see how it suggests I delete a component I imported but I did not use. Overall, Cursor Tab is pretty cool. Of course, you have to be careful with auto-generated code because that is where your brain starts to rot, where you can either disable it or configure it to not do so much. Chat is another feature that is pretty cool. It is a panel that opens on the side where you can ask questions to an LLM and can choose between a bunch of models to ask the question to. When you open the chat, it automatically includes the current open file as context, or you can select specific pieces of code to add them. And when the model replies with code, you can apply the response of the model to your code. The more context they have, the better LLMs can perform. To give context to the chat, you can use the add symbol to add context to it from different sources. Using add files, add folders, and add code, you can include a file, a whole folder, or specific blocks of code. Using add web, the LLM will search for web pages and use them as context. And my favorite one, using add docs, you can reference the documentation of whatever you are using to serve as context to prevent hallucinations. You can use the documentation of some of the most popular projects out of the box, or you can teach Cursor about a specific documentation. You can also just paste a link and it will fetch and read the page for you. 
It is also possible to open the chat in line to make an edit. I think what I just showed you are all the features that Copilot just copied, but I believe the following two are still exclusive to Cursor. Cursor Composer is to make multi-file changes. Unlike the autocomplete and the chat we just saw that operate only in one file, with Cursor Composers, the AI is able to create files and folders, as well as move code between them. It is especially good for refactoring. Check this out. I highlight a piece of code, open Composer and tell it to abstract it as a separate component to another file. And I tell it what the props should be. Composer will then create a button TypeScript file inside of the components folder. It will use the props I told it to. It will move the code from the source file to it and it will edit the source file with the new import and will use the new button component. It shows the changes as a diff and I can approve or reject them. To do those kinds of things, refactoring, creating files, typing props, importing modules, and so on, AI is a total game changer and I'm happy to use it. But to write code for me, I don't think so. That's when your brain starts to rot. And talking about writing code, to configure and customize the way Cursor generates code and the way LLMs answer you when using chat, there is a file you can create at the root of your project to help you with that. That Cursor rules is a file where you write down instructions to the LLM that Cursor uses. For example, you could tell it to only answer you back in Korean by just writing that. If you save that file and then go ask a question on the chat, you will see how it will answer you following the rules you wrote. There is a website called thatcursorrules.com where you can find a bunch of cursor rules for different kinds of projects. The more specific you are, the better it is. Take the Next.js React TypeScript, for example. You can tell it how to name variables, how to write TypeScript code. You can tell it what keywords to use and what are the imports are going to be using the most. Overall, I like Cursor. The code autocomplete, not so much, but the chat with the context like websites and documentation, Composer to refactor, and that Cursor rules to customize its responses have given me a productivity boost I did not expect when I first tried it. I used to pay for ChatGPT, Claude, and GitHub Copilot. Now I only pay for Cursor and have access to GPT-4, Claude, and a better Copilot. It is a sweet deal. I hope you liked this video. It isn't sponsored or anything, by the way. I just wanted to share. Let me know what you think on the comments and subscribe to the channel. Bye-bye.